Hi everyone, this is Dr. Udwak Lectures. Today we'll be talking about the factors that are necessary for erythropoiesis. Now, there are several factors that are necessary for the development and maturation of erythrocytes. These factors are classified into three categories. Number one are the general factors. Number two are the maturation factors. Number three are the factors that are necessary for hemoglobin formation. Now, let's talk about the general factors. The general factors necessary for erythropoiesis are Number one is erythropoietin, tyrosine, hemopoietic growth factors, and vitamins. The most important general factor for erythropoiesis is the hormone called erythropoietin. Erythropoietin is also called hemopoietin. We can also call it erythrocyte stimulating factor. It is actually secreted by the peritubular capillaries of the kidney. The stimulant for erythropoietin is actually hyposia. When the oxygen contents in the tissues are low, it results in the secretion of erythropoietin. Erythropoietin causes the formation and release of new erythrocytes into the circulation. Now, erythropoietin promotes the following processes. Number one, it promotes the production of proerythroblasts from the colony forming unit erythrocytes of the bone marrow. Number two, it promotes the development of proerythroblasts into mature red blood cells through several processes which we have mentioned earlier, which are the early nomoblasts, the intermediate nomoblasts, the late nomoblasts, and the reticulocytes. Of course, the early nomoblast is known as the basophilic erythroblast. The intermediate nomoblast is known as the polychromatophile erythroblast and the late nomoblast is known as the autochromatic erythroblast. Number three is that it promotes the release of matured erythrocytes into the blood. Now, this second one is tyrosine. Tyrosine is a general metabolic hormone that accelerates the process of erythropoiesis at many levels. The next factor is the hemopoietic growth factors. Hemopoietic growth factors or growth inducers are the interleukins and the stem cell factor. Now, generally, these factors induce the proliferation of pluripotent hemopoietic stem cells. Now, interleukins are actually glycoproteins that belong to the cytokine family. The interleukins that are involved in erythropoiesis are interleukin-3, the interleukin-6, and the interleukin-11. Now, the next factors are vitamins. Some vitamins are also necessary for the process of erythropoiesis. Deficiency of these vitamins actually cause anemia. The vitamins that are necessary for erythropoiesis are vitamin B, vitamin C, vitamin D and vitamin E. Now the next factors are the maturation factors. The maturation factors that are implicated in erythropoiesis are vitamin B12, intrinsic factor and folic acid. Now vitamin B12 is a maturation factor that is necessary for erythropoiesis. Vitamin B12 is referred to as extrinsic factor. Why? Because it is obtained mostly from the diet. Now, it is actually absorbed from the intestine, but then it requires the presence of intrinsic factor for it to be absorbed. Now, vitamin B12 is mostly stored in the liver. When necessary, it is transported to the bone marrow to promote the maturation of red blood cells. Now, vitamin B12 is essential for the synthesis of DNA in red blood cells. Its deficiency will lead to failure in maturation of red blood cells. It will also result in the reduction in cell division. Now, when this happens, the cells become larger, they become fragile, and of course, they come down with a weak cell membrane 
that results in what is referred to as macrocytic anemia. Now, deficiency of vitamin B12 causes what is referred to as pernicious anemia. So, we can also say that vitamin B12 is an anti-pernicious factor. Number two is intrinsic factor of castle. Intrinsic factor of castle is produced in the gastric mucosa by the pyrethral cells of the gastric glands. It is vital for the absorption of vitamin B12 from the intestine. In the absence of intrinsic factor, vitamin B12 is usually not absorbed from the intestine. Now, this will result in pernicious anemia. Deficiency of intrinsic factor occurs in severe gastritis and ulcer. The next factor is the folic acid. Now, folic acid is also important for the maturation of erythrocytes. It is required for the synthesis of DNA. In the absence of folic acid, the synthesis of DNA decreases, causing failure of maturation. This leads to anemia in which the cells are larger and appear in megaloblastic stage. Now, an anemia that is due to folic acid deficiency is called megaloblastic anemia. Now, let's talk about the factors that are necessary for hemoglobin formation. Now, various materials are essential for the formation of hemoglobin in the red blood cells. Deficiency of these substances decreases the production of hemoglobin, leading to anemia. Now, such factors are the first-class proteins and the amino acids. Now, proteins of high biological value are essential for the formation of hemoglobin. Now, amino acids that are derived from these proteins are required for the synthesis of the protein part of hemoglobin, which is known as the globin. The next factor is iron. Iron is actually necessary for the formation of the hem part of hemoglobin. The next one is copper. Copper is necessary for the absorption of iron from the gastrointestinal tract. The next one is cobalt and nickel. These metals are essential for the utilization of iron during hemoglobin formation. The next one is vitamins. Vitamin C and nicotinic acid are also essential for the production of hemoglobin. Thank you for listening.